Okay, in this tutorial, I'm gonna break this drawing down into steps that are way easier to follow than you might imagine, so that you can have a go, create this, and amaze yourself. Okay, so as I explained in the intro, I'm gonna break this down into steps so that you learn about the painting process and techniques, as well as the app that I'm using, Procreate. But that isn't to say you couldn't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow along. Having said that, within Procreate, I'm using their default A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 DPI. And the color profile I'm using is the sRGB, and it's the code that ends in 2.1. Again, it's here within Procreate. I'm only going to be using the brushes that come free within the app Procreate, and they are airbrushing, soft brush, probably the medium brush and maybe the medium hard brush too, within inking, maybe the studio pen, within elements, the clouds brush, and within organic, the rainforest brush. And then finally, the colors that I'm using, I've already created a color palette. And for each of these colors, if you go to the value section, there is a, a code called a hexadecimal code that you can type into this box. And the codes for each and every color in this palette is down in the video description. You just need to copy and paste each of the colors one at a time into this box, press enter, and the color will appear in this circle. And then you can tap it into this palette area and construct the color palette. Alternatively, next to the codes in the video description is a link that takes you to my Patreon page where you can download the color file for free to save you some time. And Patreon is also the place where you can support this channel, gain access to exclusive content, such as extended versions of these tutorials. I'd like to say a massive thank you to those people who do support me over at Patreon. It really does make a massive difference, so thank you so much. And with all of that said and done, let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do with my A4 canvas is just rotate it into the portrait orientation. Then I'm gonna to go to my colors. I'm gonna use the first color on the top row. I'm gonna drag from the color circle into the canvas area and release and then it should flood fill the whole canvas. I'm then gonna to go to my layers and create a new layer, layer two. I'm going to go to my brushes. I'm gonna use the elements, clouds brush, go to my colors, and I'm gonna use the second color, on the top row. I'm gonna put the brush size to 20% and 100% opacity. And just near the top of the canvas, I'm just gonna put a few taps of this, much of this cloud is not going to be visible anyway. We're going to have a lot of foliage that covers this up, but we may as well get some of this in. Just a few taps, a few kind of blobs and shapes that just stick out on their own a little bit. And we're just really aiming for this top section. You can just circle them in a little bit as well. Really what I'm looking to create is this gap where the blue kind of shines through. I'm gonna stay on the same layer, go back to the colors. I'm gonna use the third color on the top row. I'm gonna turn the brush size down to 3%, still at the 100% opacity. And now I'm just going to find some of those edges. I guess it's important at this stage to just kind of visualize where the sun might be coming from. It's pretty much in the height of the sun. So the sun is gonna be coming from the top area, probably slightly to the right, and that just will determine where you put some of the highlights to some extent. So I'm just looking to keep some of these kind of round shapes. So I'm going where some of these are. I'm just probably preferencing that curve whenever I can find it. I just want to create a section in addition to that more muted kind of white gray color. And then maybe this doesn't shine towards the sun as much. So I'll just be a little bit more hesitant. I want to add some white in there as well, but not as much. Perhaps these edges just catch the light a little bit more distinctly. And like I say, much of this might be covered over with foliage anyway, but there's no harm in just practicing. And if you're doing any other skies and any other pictures, then it's always good just to take the opportunity just to refine your technique with clouds anyway. It's definitely an area of texture that you can get lost in. In a good way, and also in a bad way. If your experience level within clouds is not 
very high yet and this is a relatively new pursuit then don't worry too much at this stage if you're struggling with these shapes they are very much a background element so just do your best with them try to emulate some of the kind of shapes it doesn't have to look exactly like mine at all all clouds are going to be different the clouds brush will have created some rounder shapes we're just tracing around some of those slightly exaggerating this sense of kind of curves but like I say, this is pretty much a background element, so don't obsess over this. As a starting point, we're just getting something in there. That's probably enough information for now. We can always come back to it and refine it further if we feel we need to. On that layer, layer two, I'm just gonna to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and I'm gonna blur it in, not massively, but maybe 2%, and then deselect the adjustments. So we're gonna create layer three. I'm going to go to my brushes and I'm going to use the airbrushing medium brush. I'm going to go to my colors and I'm going to use the fourth color along on the top row. I'm going to put the brush size not too huge, maybe about 3% and 100% opacity. And if we just zoom out so we can get a sense of where we're doing these shapes, I'm probably going to take it up to about three quarters of the way up our canvas just so it starts to cut in front of some of the cloud shapes in some areas. Just create a series of peaks. And we don't need to do too much. We're gonna do some more foreground ones that cut in front of that. But then I can just drag from the color circle into that lower area and it flood fills. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And I'm also gonna change color. Go to the colors and I'm gonna to go to the fifth color. I'm also gonna to go to the brushes, organic rainforest brush. Now I'm just gonna reset it to begin with. And I'm going to tap on the brush again. And I'm interested in changing the spacing in this texture. So I'm going to go to the stroke path and change it from 27%, which is the default. I'm going to put it up to about 50%. And click done. And even in the visualization, you can see that some of that texture is just a bit more separated and spaced apart. I'm going to keep the brush size pretty low, lower on the 2%, even within percentage, it has a little bit of wiggle room. So put it down at the lowest part of two and 100% opacity. As I was saying, it's this top area that we're gonna notice the most. I'm just adding some greenery and green shapes that are just catching the sunlight. So in, in essence, what we're doing now is we're creating areas up here that obviously represent some of the organic matter, but obviously, but also we're creating a sense that some bits are catching the light and some bits are remaining in shadow as well. So it's important you leave some gaps. And like I said before, I don't really care about this area over here. Something we could have done perhaps is go to that layer, tap on it and put on the alpha lock. Now, if you're worried about the edges and you're not very neat, then it doesn't matter how you do this with the alpha lock on, it will stop at that boundary. It won't extend up into the other elements. So that's pretty good method actually. So let's keep it at the 2% size, 100% opacity. And then we can just be a little less tidy at that top edge and not worry about it. And just be a bit more confident and really get in there and add some of this green. Now I'm only adding it to the top area. It's going to be representing the light on the top of this kind of mountainous cliff-like shape. Maybe a bit more concentrated here. I might even switch to the airbrushing medium brush, 100% opacity and just small on the size to the lower end of 2% again, even at the 1% in fact. And if you wanted to just make this a little bit sharper in places, then we can do that too. A bit more angular. This again is a pretty for, uh, background element rather. So we don't need to worry too much. Don't labor over it too long because we're gonna go to our layers and create a new layer, which goes in front of it. This is layer four going to go back to our colors and we've used the fourth and fifth now we're moving along to the sixth color we'll stay with the medium brush with an airbrushing we'll put it at about three percent size a hundred percent opacity zoom back out so we know where we're adding it in relation to other things and we can have this creeping down into this area again just create some lumps some shapes we'll just jut out something like this and you can now see that there's only a small element of that previous layer that is actually going to show through. And then again, we just drag into that area, flood fill, and we've created a more foreground, not quite foreground, but closer to area. 
you know it's closer to because anything that's super background is going to be more bleached out and the tones are going to be a little bit darker on more foreground or closer to elements. And then we're going to go to that layer, similarly to what we did on layer three, tap on it again and activate the alpha lock. We'll go back to our colors and we're going to use the seventh color along on the top row. We'll stay with the medium brush, but perhaps we'll turn the opacity down from 100% down to about 80 and we'll have the size at the lower part of 2% and we'll just zoom in a bit. Now we are just creating some shapes and texture in the kind of the shadow of this feature but we also have kind of points, drop off points, so we have peaks and then we have a drop off as you can see here. So I'm going to just think about how the texture might relate to that. So for example if we've got a kind of relatively flat area and then it drops we can have some textured rock that runs down with that shape and perhaps in other areas we're going to have some of this texture but it's a little bit more randomized and then we've got another one here and again just focus some of our texture in relation to that dropping point and then there's another subtler one here again we can have some more texture in there just really quite random again not something you really need to spend a long time over just tap a few dots and then some shapes can just be scribbled together to create blocks forms again most of this is going to be covered most of this is going to be covered it's just this central area we need maybe a big flat shape there could look good a big flat shape and then some dots again we're not going to notice some of this but it doesn't matter anyway it's a subtler shade of blue or subtle difference rather hopefully you can see that quite clearly on camera we're going to go along to the eighth color we still have the alpha lock selected and we're still using the medium brush within airbrushing we're going to keep it at the two percent size put it back up again probably at the hundred percent why not and then just imagine the sunlight is coming down and we're just going to see it as it hits the top areas for the most part and it will creep down in places but really the grass is settled on that top area it's important to try and visualize what it is you're creating and how it would relate to the the feature because that will determine the kind of shapes and where you apply it so if you realize it's in some areas going to be grass it requires a flatter area so it certainly makes sense for it to be up here maybe it would just creep into an area that just dips down for example There's a section here that you know you just see more a section of the grass that just creeps into this area let's zoom out just check progress see how you're liking the collection of shapes just like if you were working on a real canvas, sometimes you would step back, just get a sense of what's working, what isn't, and then go closer in again, or in this case, zoom in again. Okay, and I quite like the way that those shapes are forming. I think looking back at that previous layer, perhaps I will go back to layer three, go back to the initial green that we're using, which was the fifth color, and I might just go in there and tidy some of this up. I think I prefer the way that the medium brush has actually formed some of those shapes just to keep it a little bit more consistent. Perhaps I'll go in there and just amend these slightly. And also we could go back in with the fourth color, which was the blue. And we can just sort of nibble away at some of these shapes too. We just want to keep this area more clearly defined. We'll just take away some of the green. And just keep it for the bits that we want it the most sometimes it's very easy to get carried away applying something and then only when you add more elements on top you realize that actually you want a little less of it and that's fine you can always go back with digital work and just keep amending and fine tuning that's absolutely part of the process that is the beauty of digital work compared to other mediums so take advantage of that and i think i prefer that okay so let's move on. We're going to go to our layers and create a new layer. So click on the top layer and then create a new layer, layer five. The next element should be roughly about halfway on our canvas. 
So on this new layer at the top, layer 5, we're going to have similar things to what we've already got up there, but perhaps we're introducing a little bit more of a sense of trees on top of rocks. So initially we are going to go in with a medium brush with an airbrushing, go back to our colours, and we're going to go for the ninth colour, and you can see it's a darker tone. Go in with the 3% size and 100% opacity, and again, this should be roughly about halfway, and we're just going to create a kind of slightly closer feature. I'm just circling it in just to keep it slightly more rough and ill-defined, not too many angles or straight edges. I can just have this kind of angled and pitched down like that. And then I'm going to drag from the colour circle into the remaining area and it flood fills. And again, you can see this layering, this different use of tone. So we've got a dark tone, middle tone and a lighter tone to give a sense of distance and it is really effective. I'll probably go to that layer and tap on it and put on the alpha lock. Now, I haven't created an extra colour. Because we've got lighter colours back here, we can always go and use one of those. So I'm going to go for the sixth colour to create a lighter tone. Still with the medium brush, with an airbrushing. Maybe put it down to the 2%. And maybe less on the opacity this time, maybe at about 50%. And just like we had in the background areas, we're going to have some lighter tones. So I'm just creating some texture in here. Again, Really, it's only the central area that's going to be that noticeable, so don't waste too much time over here. Add some if you enjoy adding texture. It doesn't take necessarily that long, but I don't want you to spend too much time on it, is all I'm saying. Maybe we could put the brush size up to 3%, get in some textures in here. Keep it pretty random. Okay, so once we've got a smattering of texture across there, we can then change to the 10th colour. Stay initially with the medium brush, with an airbrushing, and turn it down to the, just into the 2%, and we'll go for 100% opacity initially, and then I'm just going to concentrate it on that top edge to begin with. Just tapping in some textures. We already had a kind of scribbling edge, scribbled edge, so it was already kind of undulating and round, pretty random. So we can go right up to that edge and it's already got the right kind of textures. Perhaps we'll put the size of this brush a little bit higher, top end of 2%. Bring some of this green down here. And again, it, I'm not being particularly controlled at all. There's nothing refined about these elements. Then I'm going to change brush, I'm going to go to the organic rainforest brush. Now it's still at the same setting, still at the 50% spacing. I'm going to put the brush size to 2% and 100% opacity. And then this is where, in fact that's too small, let's put that higher up on the 2%. Again, even within the same percentage, there's quite a lot of difference sometimes. Now, it also depends how much you press on. So I'm pressing on quite lightly, so I'm going to put it up to the 3%. And then we're going to start noticing now, in addition to the general shapes that we've created, we're going to start noticing some more separation of texture. So more shapes that look like foliage. This is a useful texture in a more foreground area. We're going to notice more individual organic elements the closer it gets to us. And then going to turn the size of the brush down, lower on the 2%. And then as we come further down, we're just and control that a little bit better in terms of its general shape. So we've got an initial layer up there, and then we can have some more shapes in here as well. I'm just kind of sweep across, again, because we're interested in this central area. And then we can even just bring some even lower down. Again, not really something I spent a long time on, Go back perhaps to the airbrushing medium brush, same settings as before. When you change between brushes, you don't really need to change the settings again, although that is a little bit big, so I'll turn it down to the lower part of 2%. Just some areas of this foliage. I want to keep the texture 
but then in the middle of some of these areas, I just want it to really condense together so that there's no or not as many gaps in the middle of those textures. I'll just do a little bit more refining with this medium brush. I do like the texture of the organic rainforest brush and it certainly gives us a starting point for this texture but I don't want to rely upon it too much. So I'm going in there with the medium brush and just adding more manually some extra textures in there as well. Most of this texture is pretty vague. It's not getting too defined. It's not really spelling out exactly what these features are. Okay, looking at the overall composition, I do think that some of these elements are encroaching a little bit too low down in the canvas. I knew this was something that could happen, and it is. So thankfully, we've got them all on separate layers, so we can affect each element independently. I'm going to start right at the very beginning. I'm going to go back to layer two, transform, and just from the bottom circle, push it up a little bit. And that takes some of these features higher up. That's a good starting point. And then I'm going to go to layer three, untick it so you can see where it is, transform, and I might even just move that higher. And then I can go to layer four. And again, I could just move that higher. Just be careful when you're peeling it away from the edges because you sometimes you end up with a line. And if you have done that, well, you can always put it on free form anyway and just stretch it if you need to. So it extends beyond the boundaries of the canvas. And that way you definitely won't get a gap. Again, we can just extend that up. And that enables me now to go to layer five, transform. And I can move that more significantly up now to begin with. Again, just stretch it out so that it extends beyond the edges of the canvas. So you don't get a gap. Deselect, just check where we're actually up to and that is better but even then I can go to the transform and just freeform push it up a little bit more and I think I'm happier with that so now we're just checking where everything is placed I think the bottom area of this texture is probably almost down to where the third of the canvas up and it just condenses it better into this area which should be slightly more upwards of the halfway point so let's move further forward now with some more foreground elements so we'll go back to our layers and create a new layer, layer six. Go back to my colors. I'm gonna use the first color on the middle row. I'm gonna to go to the organic rainforest brush. I'm gonna tap on it again. I'm actually gonna reduce the spacing down to about 40%. Click done. I'm gonna put the size at around 3% and 100% opacity. Now I want this texture to just really be quite bold and I'm circling it in. I don't want to have it extend too high up and I don't want too much variation in its height. If you start putting it up here, then it, it either represents something absolutely massive in the distance or it's going to create the sense that it's much closer to us. I'm not ready to quite add closer elements. This is more background still. So once you've done a layer of that across, you can just go lower down and fill in. Again, all these elements can be adjusted, transformed, and moved around the canvas should we decide we need to later on. So that will do to begin with. Try to eliminate all the little gaps if you can, or most of them. I'm going to go to the layer, tap on it and put on the alpha lock. I'm then going to change brush to the airbrushing soft brush. And I'm going to go to the second color on the middle row. I'm going to put the brush size to 20% and the opacity pretty low at around 50%. I'm aiming really for the bottom part of this area and just do a band of it there. And then I can go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur that in even further to about the 40%. And you can see it's just created a little bit of a gradient up from that green down to a cooler color here. I'm then going to switch color to the third color on the middle row. We still have the alpha lock engaged. And I'm going to go back to the organic rainforest, still at the 40% spacing. I'm going to turn the size of the brush down to lower on the 2% and maybe about 90% opacity. So pretty strong still. And then I'm just going to move along that top edge and start to bring out some of the highlights. Now, when greens get closer to us, they get much more vibrant, much warmer greens, more yellow greens that really have a like I say, a warmth to them compared to greens that are in the distance. Greens that are in the distance take on more of the blue of the atmosphere 
greens that are closer to us much more vibrant. So first of all, I'm just moving it along that top edge, as I say. Once we've applied it along that top edge, what might be quite useful actually is to create a new layer and tap on that and put on the clipping mask. And that actually links it to the layer below. So again, we have the benefit of it not extending beyond the boundary, but it is going to be a separate layer. So again, I'm going to go in with the 2% size, 90% opacity, and let's just continue to work into here. I don't want to take it all the way down to the bottom area here. I'm having it thin out as we go further down, but we certainly want to bring it further down from that top edge. The top edge is going to have most of the brightness because you can imagine the top of a tree is going to collect the most light. And as we come further down, we start to have more shadows, more gaps in that lighter color more separation of it. And then as we get further up, yep, yeah, it just starts to collect, bunch together more so. Now the reason I put this on a separate layer is if you go too far and you've bunched it too much together, well you can always go back in with the eraser now, set also to the organic rainforest brush, set it to an appropriate size, 2%, 100% opacity, and you can go in there and just remove some of that now in these lower areas if you feel like you've done too much. And it doesn't interact, it does rather, it doesn't remove the color that's behind it. I don't feel like I've made too much in the, in the way of errors with it so far though, so I'm gonna continue more positively with the brush. But it's always nice just to have elements on a different layer, just as a backup in case you need to go back and just backtrack a little bit. You can two fingers backtrack, keep pressing them, two finger dashes, or two finger taps rather, and it will go back. But it only goes back so far, so many times, and then really you're stuck. So if you keep things on separate layers, then it allows you to go back in to the different elements and adjust them more easily. Okay, I'm gonna turn the size of the brush down, lower on the 2%, and maybe to about 50% opacity. And as we come further down here, I just want it to be more subtle. Don't, like I say, don't need as much of it down in the lower area. Just a few dashes and taps, not so much, like so. I'm also gonna create a new layer and put the blend mode to a different property. So I'll tap on the little N on the layer, scroll down to the add, and then I'm going to go in with the same brush, but you can see it's much more vibrant when we've done that. So I need to turn the opacity down about 10%. I'll keep the color the same, so we're still using the third color. We're still using the rainforest brush. I'm going to put it 2% size, 10% opacity now. And just so that we can create some variation in there of that light tone, I'm just going to go in there and just add a little bit more towards that upper area. Perhaps we also should have tapped on it and put on the clipping mask again so we can't extend beyond that boundary we've already created. And certainly in that upper area, we can just create something that's even more vibrant not using a different color, it's just using a different blend mode and it will just bring out a bit more of the sun, the glow in a way that's quite useful. Then you can really just go for it in those upper areas a little bit more. I think that helps. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my layers and create a new layer, layer nine. We're gonna go in with the rainforest brush once more, but we're gonna move along. We're gonna to go to the fourth color on the middle row. And just in the context of the whole canvas, we're moving more towards the, the center here but I'm also going to move up into some of these areas too, either side. So with that rainforest brush, with that fourth color on the middle row, higher on the 2% size and 100% opacity, I'm going to start adding this now to some of this center area, not quite the very center, almost. We're just creating a series of smaller lower lying trees but also I'm gonna create some higher up as well. These are not quite the very foreground trees, but they're definitely getting kind of closer. And then we could just create some more in that area too. And again, I'm not worried too much about these areas back here or off at the sides because we're gonna have elements that are even closer cutting in front. So it's, it's this area, I suppose, that we're really creating at this point. So again, I'm creating those kind of top edges and shapes. 
And then in this area, I just want to create a similar kind of thing, but smaller. And then I'm going to move to this side and something similar over here. Some lower lying trees and shapes. Some that are just encroaching a little bit higher up here. And then some that are higher up in a similar kind of height to the other side. And then we can start to just close down some of the, the gaps, shut out some of the, the light that's getting through. You can just scribble it in a little bit. That's absolutely fine as well. So we've created a bit of a gap, like a channel through, where you can see things more in the background, but we can shut that down as much as you like, just shut down, shut out some of the gaps there. I'm still going to keep applying some of this foliage up into these top areas. Perhaps we can have a better separation. So I'm just going to do this at the top end of 2%, 90% opacity. And as we get higher up, perhaps we can just have a clearer separation of some of these shapes. We'll start to notice individual clumps a little bit more. Same on this side. So we can have just some bits that stick out, perhaps a series of blobs, some that even kind of stick out higher up, keep them as separate kind of clumps. And there's no reason why we can't continue these up to the very kind of upper areas. Now some of these tones need to be knocked back a little bit, perhaps add more light into them, and we'll do that in just a second. You can easily knock some of this back quite effectively. Just something sticking out here, I think will work. You can have bigger trees that this can be part of too. And likewise up here. Okay, so we're really shutting it down to this channel now in the center. So what I'm gonna do with that layer is I'm gonna tap on it and put on the alpha lock. I'm then gonna switch gear. I'm gonna to go to the airbrushing soft brush and I'm gonna start just pushing and changing some of the tones on this. So I'm gonna go for the third colour on the middle row, I'm going to put the brush size maybe at 10% and the opacity down at around 10% as well. And I just want some of these areas to be a little bit more bleached out. They're not necessarily as foreground. I want to push them back a little bit more so that they're catching more of the light in general. And same with these ones that are sticking out. And perhaps this upper area. We're going to add much darker tones for the trees that are very much foreground. Perhaps these are just closer to, but further backwards around a taller tree. So we'll just bleach them out a little bit. That allows us to have a background element when we add darker trees over the top. So it brings down just for this section. Then I'm gonna to switch to something cooler, more like the blue. So I'm gonna go for the second color on the middle row. Turn the size of the brush down to 5% and just a hint of cooler tone down here. Again, just to push them slightly further back. Foliage is going to get all mixed together and slightly more confused, so don't worry too much. Just want to create different perspectives. So I'm just adding a cooler tone down here and a warmer tones up at the top. And they will combine with different tree elements to create a good illusion. So I'm going to create a new layer, layer 10, and I'm going to switch to the inking studio pen back to my colors and I'm, I've used the first four I'm going to go for the fifth color it's slightly darker brush size at 20% and 100% opacity and I'm going to start getting in some of these areas now and just start adding some branches and some tree trunks now this is still a relatively cooler and not quite as black as we could have for the foreground element so this is going to be a relatively subtle in the scheme of things anyway a relatively subtle tree so we'll press more at the base and then release the pressure as we go further up. Press more at the base and release the pressure. And we can have some branches that just cut in front of each other. We're going to add foliage that interrupts some of these branches anyway. So you don't need to agonize over them again. More at the base and then release it as it goes higher up. I'm keeping it contained within the general shape that we've created. I don't want to extend beyond that. Just extend some more branches into some more of these tree shapes as well. Again, we're probably going to cover much of these with other foliage textures, but some bits will show through, so we need to get some extra 
branches in there, certainly. So I'm just concentrating in this lower area and more distant trees to begin with. Make them connect to some of the shapes that you've already created. Try and make sense of them a little bit. I wouldn't really extend beyond about that section. We're going to have some darker tree trunks that will be taller and more foreground. These are slightly more distant. Not to say that we won't have some other ones, other tree trunks in the mix here as well. We'll probably get obscured by darker tones and bigger tree trunks, but we don't want it to be completely empty back here. So we can just add some more tree trunks. But really the finer branches, we're just going to focus them where we're going to notice them really. There's no point adding them to areas that are just going to get lots of other things. So just where we're going to notice them the most. And that will do initially. Then I'm going to go and create a new layer, layer 11. I'm going to go back to the organic rainforest brush. I'm going to use the fourth color again on the middle row and just some of it we can add back in there and some of it is going to obscure some of these tree branches and tree trunks. We're bringing some of that warmer tone back in here in some places where we'd slightly cooled it off. We can soften in that top edge, certainly at the top of the branches. Something like this. And then it's always important to have some areas in the middle of the tree trunk where you just sort of obscure it and cover it as well. And then we can move along to the, or backwards rather, to the third color again. Lower on the 2% size, 90% opacity. And again, we're just wanting to bring out some of the highlights. So preference the top edges of the trees, perhaps we'll turn the size of the brush down to the 1% and we can control it a little bit more accurately. Now again, different layers are going to get more blended together. So you're not always going to notice the difference between the background and the foreground. The thing that's going to make the difference is the darker tones that underpin this. So the shadow areas of these trees are going to be what brings it further forward. Obviously then we have a higher up sections and when we have highlights in there, that's going to bring them further forward too. So we can move forward and start to do that on see some of these upper areas as well. So again, let's just zoom in, concentrate on the top edges of some of these trees. Now we can go up into these higher areas too, why not? Again, just preference that top edge where most of the light tends to catch. It directly reflects the light of the sun. It faces it more immediately, so it will catch more of that light. Let's just bring back some of the highlights into these areas somewhat, but then obviously the more dense the tree area, the more shadow is going to create. So we don't want to add as much of the highlights as we come back into this area. Perhaps it just starts to develop gaps, thins out, not as much in the way of highlight. We're just going to concentrate towards the top edge of some of these trees and also in this central area where some of the light actually manages to get through. Create some things that are lower down towards the ground as well. And like I say, don't worry if some areas are just getting confused with other areas. That's part of the process that happens. And don't worry too much about that at all. The overall effect will pan out. In order to further enhance that, we can go back to layer six, perhaps. We can go back in with a cooler color. So maybe the ninth color on the top row. Back in with the airbrushing soft brush, 5% size, 10% opacity. And if we just go into this area now, we just bring out some of that coolness again in this bottom area. Again, it just helps bring some of these trees further forward with the warmer tones. It makes more sense of that area, certainly. And even layer seven, we can go in there and we can 
just apply some of this blue over the top as well, just a little bit more, subdue it ever so slightly. Let's go back to the top layer, back in with that third colour, also back in with the organic rainforest brush, 2% size, 90% opacity, and let's continue adding some of the highlights at the top edges. Perhaps turn it up a little bit more, higher on the 2%. Okay, looking back at the overall composition, I'm just going to go back to layer 6. I think it's encroaching far too much onto the scene. In fact, I almost prefer it when it's not there. And that sometimes happens midway through tutorials, and it's just part of the process. Um, I think I'm not going to eliminate it completely. I'm going to keep it as a layer, but I am going to reduce it. I'm going to go to the selection, freeform, and just squash it further down. I don't mind it being there, but I want it as a, a reduced element, so I'm going to bring it down so it's just visible in this area, but not anywhere near where it was up there. So again, just pinch it down. It's more in this kind of region, and I, I think I'm just much happier with the way that the overall scene works like that. Perhaps we could continue to work some highlights in there, however. So we'll go back to the organic rainforest. Go to the third colour on the middle row, 2% size, 90% opacity, and we probably should turn off the alpha lock as well, just so that it enables us to do this. And then we can continue just to balance it out, maybe even the 1% size, just redefine that top edge a little bit better. Don't mind some of the foliage, some of the highlights working down either. And yeah, I think I'm just much happier with that. I think it works a lot better. I'm going to go to my top layer and create a new layer, layer 12. I'm going to go in again with the inking studio pen and I'm going to move along to a pretty dark colour. We can always subdue it slightly if we need to. I'm going to move along to the first colour on the bottom row. We can always subdue and amend this if we need to. I'm going to put the brush size at about 20% and about 90% opacity and we're just going to create some trees that just Give us some branches for trees of about this region. We've got branches that explain the lower areas, but we need to create some branches now that extend into about this area. So I can just go to the areas that need the branches and press lightly, extend some branches down, and we're probably going to have them in front of the other ones. And then as we come further down into this area, press on more, so we get to our tree trunk. Again, just decide where you want the branches to be, join them up. Maybe a little bit of a branch there joins in down here. Another one joins up, splinters off. You create your branch structure wherever you think it, it seems to make sense the most. And you don't need to go overboard with the branches. But you definitely need a suggestion of some that would support and enable some of the foliage that we see at the top. Because without something to give it the structure and support, then it really wouldn't exist up there. I'm not going to touch the top regions just yet. Again, start with the smaller branches perhaps. Sometimes I do the opposite. I start with the thick branches or the tree trunk. And in this case, I'm just starting with the finer branches and bringing it further down. No particular reason. Perhaps I just really want to focus my energy, making sure that the, the finer branches are at focus, really. It is these areas that I think that will matter the most. So create some branches. Remember to add gaps in there as the branches goes behind and in front of foliage in different areas. You don't have to do a huge amount of this because we're going to add more trees and features in front of it anyway. That's probably about enough for now. I might just go to that layer and turn the opacity down on it. So I'll tap on the N, dial it back a little bit, maybe to about the 80%. And just subdue it ever so slightly. I think at this point we need to just build in more low line textures here as well. So I'm going to create a new layer, layer 13, go to my colors. I'm going to use the six color along. I'm going to go in with the organic uh, rainforest brush, 3% size, 90% opacity, and 
we're just going to build in some texture here at the, the bottom on both sides and it's going to start obscuring some of those tree trunks and that's absolutely fine start with a darker texture initially then we can move to maybe even a darker texture maybe go for the seventh color and we can add that in the mix too now not much of this is going to show through we're going to add highlights on top of this as well but it's good to have the darkness in there in places it it does make a difference but just on either side then we're going to go back to the third color on the middle row and we're really going to work some highlights into these areas now but just slightly lower two percent size 90 percent opacity and we're just going to bring in tap in some of these highlights and probably need to turn it even lower lower on the two percent tap in some foliage in and around in and around here it can be quite broken and that's fine cuts in front of tree trunks and then we can bring it down even lower into the one percent and then it just starts to extend onto the ground as well so we're going to have some grassy areas that extend onto our path so we can have some stripes just a hint of them anyway maybe they should bank upwards a little bit maybe we'll go back up again into the two percent tap that in maybe the stripes are a little bit too horizontal maybe we want to pitch them upwards a little bit more so I'm just breaking that up with the texture. I'm getting some really nice highlights on the ground. Tap it in for more or closer areas. I'm going to have this area perhaps in more shadow. I don't want to do too much of it over on this side either just yet. Maybe just some hints of it there in the center like so. I think at this point I'm actually going to merge a lot of my layers. So I'm going to take layers 6 to layer 13 and I'm going to pinch them together. Now there is a blend mode that was changed to add. I'm not going to worry too much about that. It won't make really any difference now. I'm going to pinch from layer 6 to layer 13 together. And if I untick it, you can see all of it is on one layer now. I'm going to go to the transform and on freeform I'm just going to push it up. So we've created enough space here for kind of like a foreground path area I think about there is sufficient now we'll just reclaim some of this bottom area now I'm going to start adding in some more foreground trees to our scene so I'm going to go back to my layers and the beauty of this now is that we've only really got six layers again so I'll create a new layer layer seven I'm going to go to the airbrushing medium in fact, medium hard brush we'll go for the eighth color on the middle row I'm going to put it to about 4% size, 100% opacity. Just zoom out so you can see the top of the canvas. And I'm going to bring a tree trunk in from this side. Up in this area just to get the placement. And then one over here. Again, just to get the placement. And then obviously I need to thicken it up. You don't need to be overly neat and tidy at this point. Sometimes the rougher the brush marks are, then actually builds in some texture and just some kind of more natural look right from the outset then we can turn it down two percent have some tree branches that just jut out create little kinks and wobbles in the branches here and there now it's pressure sensitive but it just goes lower opacity so if you've been used to using the inking brush then it doesn't reduce the size it just reduces the strength so perhaps we could change the inking studio pen keep the same colors Put it up to 40% size, 100% opacity, and we could continue this. Just enables us to then press lightly for thinner branches, trail off, press harder for thicker sections. I am used to using this brush for tree branches, so it is more intuitive to me as well. So press more for thicker and then release the pressure as you trail off. Some of these branches are going to be obscured by foliage again some of them not so let's create some thicker branches that can support some foliage okay now we need to create a new layer layer eight i might put this layer in fact underneath layer seven now we know where the branches are we know where to put the foliage so 
Layer eight is now underneath the branches and the tree trunk. I'm gonna go in with the rainforest brush with an organic, go back to my colors. We we'll use the eighth color. We can go for something dark, but not as black. So maybe the fifth color, 3% size, 100% opacity. And then we just need to create some foliage that corresponds to these branches and foliage that just sits behind the branches in places, perhaps. Perhaps it's more in shadow over here, more shadow over this side in some areas too. Again, this is all just sitting behind the tree. We can have this lower down as well in some areas. We've created a lot of highlights so far, so it's definitely time that we start adding some of the shadow in there. And that's going to create the contrast, create the channel of light in the center area. So without that contrast, the effect isn't going to be as good, as effective. So we definitely need to darken up some of these areas now in places. And that can be extended into the ground as well. Quite nice to have a darker context and then build up the light on top of areas. So I always prefer to go dark on the foreground first and then build highlights on top. Then we can go to, perhaps we can go to the first color and you know, it's all not all going to be the same tone. So we could have some middle kind of tone greens in here as well. Just a few touches of these. So it's not quite the highlight, but it's not the same shadow areas either. Not too much of that though. I think that that could be a bit distracting. Some of it in places works really nicely though. Then I'm going to go to my top layer, layer seven and create a layer on top of that. Again, we're going to go to this time, maybe the fourth color and just some textures that perhaps cut in front in places. So slightly obscure some of these branches and even the tree trunk. I want it to feel like it belongs in its environment. So it's a good way of achieving that is to have things cutting in front. And I'm also then going to use the third color on the middle row. Now we're building in some of the highlights again. So put it down to 2% size. 100% opacity is fine still. And again, pressing lightly perhaps, we can just build in some of the highlights in places. Not as many places for this feature though. But certainly some of the highlight will extend just in one or two places in front of the tree trunks. And perhaps more so as we get towards the upper areas. This one I'm going to keep largely in shadow, so perhaps we can go for something cooler. So maybe something like the ninth color on the bottom row. And we can bring some of this cool tone in here, which is still pretty dark actually. It's not very noticeable, but it is just a little bit cooler. Perhaps we can go for the tenth color on the top row, but turn that strength down to 20%. And then just, yeah, bring some of that lighter tone in but not too much. Okay, I'm quite happy with the effect that that's starting to bring in. I think we can go back to layer six and actually bring some of that dark tone in even more. So I'm gonna to go to the, well, stick with the rainforest brush. In fact, I'm gonna to go to maybe the second color on the bottom row, 2% size, maybe around 40% opacity. And I can just build in some of the darkness back here a little bit more. Make a bit more of some of these shadow areas, perhaps. Not too much, because it, it will be destructive to the other elements that we've already created back there. But we're creating more things in front of it now, so that's okay. As long as we're just subtle with it, encroach it a little bit from the edges. That could be quite beneficial. Okay, I'm going to go to my top layer and create a new layer, layer 10. I'm going to go in with the airbrushing, medium brush. And I'm going to use the first colour on the bottom row. 5% size, 100% opacity, and I just want to build in some nice dark tone down here. So I'm just going to press lightly as we get up towards these areas up here, but then just more roughly blot it in a little bit lower down. So press lightly as we come up here, that's fine, and then just blot it in. So I prefer to start with a darker tone, as I was explaining, for the foreground kind of area. Okay, so once we've got that as a base color, we can create a layer on top of it, layer 11. Now what I'm gonna do now is go to the second color on the bottom row. I'm gonna stay with the medium brush, put it down to maybe 2% size, 50% opacity, and I'm just gonna start building in 
some textures in this area, just some kind of dashes, some texture on the ground. Some stones, just some dirt on the ground really. We're creating a, a kind of natural looking path. It might have stones there, but it might have other organic elements too. We don't really need to overly define exactly what they are. Just the texture itself will start to be suggestive of things. Start building in that texture to begin with. Then we'll move along to this third color on the bottom row. And again, start building in some more of these shapes. Just keep them roughly going horizontal and just maybe some slightly smaller shapes with this tone. Continue to further break up these areas. Now, please bear in mind, I'm only really kind of going through these textures in these areas relatively quickly in this tutorial. If you want to spend longer on your version, you've got the time to spare, then I do encourage you to do that. I'm just giving you the overall effect as efficiently and as kind of quickly as possible. And if you want to spend the time, spend longer on this and do even more detail and, and achieve a better result, then I'd absolutely encourage that. That's fantastic. Okay, I'm going to create another layer. We can always condense these together as we feel more confident, but I'm going to go along to the fourth color, which is a warmer tone and same setting. So still 2% and 50% opacity. And I'm just building in some of these warmer tones now. And it's a good way of just defining where these edges are. You can always go over it with the green tones and create some organic textures here, obviously. But now we're creating, I guess, bits that are affected more by the sun. Same kind of textures as that we've got on the ground. We could even try going back to the organic rainforest brush, I suppose. 3% size, 40% opacity. And we could bring that in. Perhaps that's going to speed it up a little bit. I don't always like to use the same texture throughout, but we could use combinations. Bring that in. It might just speed up the process. And we can go back in there and control the texture in some areas a little bit more but just to define where the outer edges of some of these areas are. Move along to the fifth color. And I think we do need to go back to something like the airbrushing medium brush for this. Slightly lower on the 2%, 50% opacity still. And this is going to be much brighter. So now we can just wind this path back to its origin or certainly further back in our scene anyway. And we can start to bring it in here. We can imagine it kind of zigzagging a little bit meeting the kind of edge of where the grass and other bushes and organic matter kind of grow at the sides. And as we come down here, we probably need to start creating a sense of it being dappled. So again, maybe even down to the, the absolute lowest part of 2%. Now we can just start breaking this texture up a little bit sharper. That I might even put the opacity up to 70%. I'm going to have some isolated shapes now in some of these areas. So we've got the warmer tone. So we know that this is more, more affected by the light. It's slightly less in the shadow, but in and amongst that now, we can just have these highlights, this dappled light coming through. Now, if you prefer to work sideways just to get some nicer shapes, then that's what I'm going to do. I just the sweep the movement works better when I actually rotate the canvas. We do have an even brighter color. In fact, a series of brighter colors, but I'm going to stick with the fifth color to begin with. We're going to have areas where it bunches together and then it becomes more separated and it eventually just disappears. And just keep zooming out, looking at the overall effect. I think I need a good chunk more of it over in this area. But I don't mind being a bit bolder. And it, it doesn't all need to be completely horizontal as well. As the, the ground picks up, banks up, then you can have some of these shapes go with it. And if you create larger areas, well, you can always move along a tone, a color, go to the sixth color. And within there, you can create more texture as well, break it up even further. And obviously, the more of the lighter tones we add into the mix here as well, it's really going to push the vibrancy of the sunlight up. In fact, I'm going to really go for it. I'm going to go for the eighth color. So back here, we're not going to get much of that dark tone. We are going to get a lot more of the lighter colors. 
and it's just going to push such a sense of light back there in a really nice way. Turn it down to 1% back there as well, perhaps a little bit lower at 50%. And that makes more sense back there. There's less to be in the shadow, but up again, 2% size as it comes in these areas, and perhaps that's a little bit bright, so we'll dial it back to the seventh color. And we still definitely want large areas to be pretty bright still, but just not quite as bright, perhaps, as we get closer to. Okay, big areas that are still very much in the highlight of the sun. Tap it in around the edges. We're gonna have little stones things that have fallen off the trees that just interrupt that brightest lot of lights. And dial it back even more to the six color. Zoom out, check. The effect definitely want it encroaching really quite forward in our scene i'm just going to go back to the fifth color think of a start more subtle actually it's beneficial in fact i'll even go back to the fourth color two percent size 50 percent opacity and let's just get some of this tone in so i know exactly where i want to put the highlight and i actually want to have this tone really defining almost all of this edge along this side I think that works better then. So not really much of that super dark tone at all. I'm going to preserve it over at this side, certainly, but less so over here. And then back in with the fifth color. Control it with the 1% size, or maybe just into the 2%, 50% opacity. And then again, just be a bit more controlled. Maybe it's just highlighting the edges of some rocks and pebbles and things there too. You can imagine that. Put it up again, larger on the 2%, fill in some larger areas. I think there's quite a lot I want to be highlighted over at this side. Obviously we're adding highlights, but you can go in there and, and change the edges of the shadow too. So this is just thinking about it in one sense, but we're not restricted to only adding highlights. We can go in there and control the shadow too. The shadow really, I suppose, is the, the texture that matters more because it will be the shadow of foliage. So for example, we could go in with now the fourth color. Now we've got a lighter color. We can use this darker color to almost think about it in terms of leaves on the tree. So just like we've got those kind of textures here, we can start to kind of represent that a little bit on the ground too. So we can have some fragments that break free, have a slightly spikier kind of rougher edge on these shadows give it a little bit of a, a character of its own so it's not just the highlights that are important the shadows are, are really a crucial part of this too we'll go back to the highlights so i'm going to go back to the six color and i'm swapping and changing between these different tones and that is an important part of this so now we're in a, a full-on kind of highlighted area we'll start to notice maybe cracks in the earth where it's dried out it just kind of fragments into different chunks i'll come back to that i'm going to add some more rocks and other elements here too so i'm going to create a new layer for that layer 13 i'm going to go in with the first color in fact i'm going to go to this eighth color on the middle row still with a medium brush perhaps just going to create a nice rock in here that just juts out so 50%, that's not strong enough. Let's put it up to 80%. Create a nice rock over on this side. And maybe just something that could live in this area. I'm probably going to cover it with greenery anyway, but it's no harm in getting it in place. I'm going to move back to the first color on the bottom row. So any rocks that are just sat back here are not going to be as black. And we're going to have more of that blue tone instead. So I've got some rocks. Move along. Maybe the second color on the bottom row. Still a medium brush down to the lowest part of 2%. 50% opacity, and I'll zoom in. I need to just create some highlights on the top of this rock. Again, it's gonna catch the light. It's in the shadow area, but it's certainly gonna have some light reflected. 
And then we can continue to add more rocks on the ground that live nearby as well. Maybe move along to the third colour and further push the highlights on that top edge, certainly. Perhaps I'll go to the ninth colour on the top row for an even brighter colour. I'll just turn it down to maybe 15% and I can just use it to bring out that top edge a little bit more. I don't want to do too much of this brightest blue, but certainly mixing it with the third blue on the bottom row. I'll just continue to push some of that top edge of the rock out a little bit so it's more noticeable again alternate between the ninth colour on the top row and the third colour on the bottom row. Zoom over here. Again, I'm using the ninth colour as it happens quite a lot from the top row over in this area. There's some cooler tones. There's a rock here. It's just, again, catching the light. Third colour on the bottom row, just to create some subtleties. And the rocks really don't need to be a massive feature because we're going to add, again, a lot more greenery. So on that front, I'm going to go stay on the same layer. I'm going to go to the organic rainforest. I'm going to go for something more vibrant. So maybe the first colour on the middle row, 2% size and 90% opacity. And I can just add some foliage in here on the ground some greenery and that is very bright in fact let's go for something like the fourth colour I'm not going to remove what I've just done but I'm just going to soften it in with some slightly earthier darker tones and I can come in over at this side and continue build some of this greenery over the top of the rocks anyway encroach into the path tap it in make it more broken scribble it in in areas scribble it in over here and down here, perhaps even turn the size of the brush up 3%, make it bolder. Then I'm going to move along to a brighter colour, the third colour on the middle row, slightly lower on the 2% and maybe about 70% strength, opacity. And then again, tap some of these textures into this area. On this side, definitely, I think it needs it. I've got the, the sunlight coming in here, so it definitely is going to impact the green areas too. Less so on this side, but not absolutely nothing. So we've got highlights here, so it should just clip the edge of the greenery here too, just in places. And some more in here. Add more to the ground, encroach up on the path. Well, we don't want any of these dark colours back here in the distance, so let's just nibble away at some of those dark tones on the path. Want more sunlight than anything else. I'm going to go back to layer 12. I'm going to go back in with the airbrushing medium brush and I'm going to go for the third colour, third blue, just into the 2% and maybe about 80% opacity. And again, just build in some more definite shapes of this blue down here. I don't want to lose that texture. It's quite a nice bit in the shadow areas of this kind of stone or earth that's just mixing with the stone, whatever. Doesn't really matter. I just like the colour in the shadow area. I'm going to move along to the fourth colour. Again, I like this colour in these areas, so I'm just going to continue to work this shadow, turn it on its side so I can control it better. Whoops. It joins up with the other side in places too, so let's bring that across, check how it's working. Shadow there, perhaps. Back in with the highlight, a colour again, so maybe the fifth colour. Again, just... We're just alternating between the shadow and the light. Let's create this dappling. It needs to be broken texture, so it needs to be little bit of dark, little bit of light, and just keep alternating. So we're going to go for the sixth colour. Again, this is an even brighter tone. So in the highlighted areas, we're just pushing that even further, pushing that contrast, and that will really help sell the idea of dappled light escaping through as well. It needs to be intense when it breaks through. 
otherwise it loses the potency. I'm going to go back to layer 6. I'm just going to slide and I'm going to duplicate it. And I think it just makes some of these areas look a little bit denser. And I quite like that effect. I'm going to go to the bottom version. And I'm going to go to the transform. And I'm going to flip it horizontally. And you won't really notice it too much. But it's just going to add some extra foliage. And perhaps just move it around so it's not like a, a mirror duplication. But I quite like the idea of just making some of these areas a little bit denser, so I'm going to offset it slightly. If there's any little areas there where you create a straight line, let's go with the smudge tool, set something like the soft brush. Doesn't matter too much, just get rid of that straight edge. It won't be that noticeable. I quite like the impact that that has. I'm going to go to my top layer. I'm going to create a new layer on top of that, layer 15. I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to add. I'm going to continue with the rainforest brush. I'm going to use the ninth color on the middle row. I'm going to turn the brush size down to the lowest part of 2% and have it at 30% opacity. And I feel like I could just continue to ramp up some of the highlights in this scene. I really want to push the sense of sun. And I think that can easily be done by just using this add blend mode, really exaggerating some of the highlights. And I think that that just will make the whole scene more effective. So I'm going to push it onto both sides of the grass over in this middle area. But I'm also going to push it up into the tree canopies, canopy, and really help exaggerate some of these highlights. Just bear in mind, if the highlights go behind some of the tree trunks, then try not to add it over the top of the tree trunk. But anything that goes in front of a branch or a tree trunk, then obviously go for that. Don't worry too much. I think that has lifted quite a lot of the areas really quite easily. Maybe add some more features on the ground. Features back here on the path even. More ground level, but... They're in there. One last thought, perhaps we can go back to the tree trunks that are more foreground, tap on that layer, put on the alpha lock. Perhaps we should go here with something like the airbrushing medium brush. We need to add some warmer highlights onto these trees. So I'm gonna go for perhaps the fourth color and we can just build in. So I've got this at 2%, perhaps I'll turn it down to 30% strength. Just build in some textures on this tree trunk and this one, again, Definitely not laboured over. I'm just pushing that through the branches. Perhaps the cool tone, we'll go that to the third colour. Add some of that blue in there. It's a bit vibrant, not too much. And then we can go to a much brighter tone, so maybe the fifth. And then in some areas, perhaps it's just, again, catching the light. Just like the path is. So we've got this dappled light coming through and affecting the tree as well. And again, that's quite an effective element to add. And it again, brings it to life a little bit more. Back to layer 12, back in with this eighth color. I'm just gonna, with the medium brush, 2% size, 30% strength opacity, build in some of this brightness again, once more. You know, I don't want any of these dark tones remaining in this distant area. I want it to really ramp up the brightness dial it back, perhaps to the sticks color. As we come into this region, I think that's just building it all together a little bit better. Okay, there's no doubt I could carry on with the textures and add a lot more detail to that. I'll probably reserve that for the extended version of this tutorial over at my Patreon page. But for now, I'm gonna leave this tutorial here at this point. I hope you've enjoyed following along. Don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell notification to make sure you are notified of all the future videos that I produce here. Thanks so much for watching. I shall catch you back here soon. Bye for now.